Joining us now on the markets, Michael Landsberg, Landsberg Bennett Private Wealth Management Chief Investment Officer. Michael, great to have you with us. Um, how do you view this rise in bond yields? It seems like whenever bond yields tick higher, 10-year in particular, we see a headwind for stocks. Is that something that you continue to be concerned about, or do you think the 10-year is sort of uh, going to see its, its peak soon? Listen, I, I think the 10-year can go a little higher. I mean, <clears throat> typically the bond market has always kind of led the stock market. And I think, you know, we've expected the Fed to continue to raise rates. I, I don't see really a reason why it doesn't continue to go higher. Now, I'm not saying it's going to be 6 or 7%, but I think where we are now, we're starting to see a little bit of pain in the equity markets. But I, I think that could continue for a little while as rates push higher and they're more competitive for people's dollars. You're recommending investors cycle out of tech. I mean, we've seen that sort of cycling out of the biggest tech companies already with, uh, you know, Microsoft down 15% or so from its peaks, Apple down about 10%. Where do you put that money? It's typically a process that we do. Obviously, last year, tech down so much, made a lot of sense to kind of add that to it in January. And, and you know, conversely, July, we took some money off the table and, and some of those bigger names, NVIDIA, Amazon. We're going to look for the ones that are growing earnings. I mean, this earnings season's not been great. Um, I think we're down 8% um, year over year in S&P 500 earnings, but there are companies that are growing earnings. Uh, United Health Group growing earnings, McDonald's uh, growing earnings, uh, Diageo as well, in, in Lockheed Martin. So we're looking for the names that are growing earnings that just haven't had the multiple expansion that tech has had, because realistically, the tech expansion has been great. I mean, those seven names are up, I think, on average 80 some odd percent. It makes sense to take some money off the table, not to get out of tech, but when a name like NVIDIA goes from 4% of a portfolio to 9 or 10, it makes sense to cut it back. How do you answer the evaluation question? I mean, you, you like a McDonald's, for instance, which is trading at about 24 times forward. Take a look at Meta. It's trading at 21 times forward. Some people might say, hmm, that's a sort of an interesting um, choice to make to choose McDonald's over a, a Meta. Yeah, and again, I, I think that's a valid point. Meta is actually probably the one that's not crazily uh, you know, multiple-wise in, in this environment. But part of it's just the fact that Meta's had such a big move. We want to rebalance and trim back. So if Meta's 3% of our portfolio, it got to six, you know, almost 6%, we're going to take it back a little bit. doesn't mean I don't like Meta, but when you've had a big move like that and you haven't you know, had a move like that in McDonald's, it makes sense for us to trim a little bit back. At the end of the day, we're in the risk management business. And when a stock is you know, more than double like Meta has in six months, we thought mm -hmm. it made sense to take some of that money off the table allocated to something that is high quality growth, right. um, just a little bit more defensive. You're also recommending that people look abroad, India, Brazil, uh, Japan. And I'm wondering how you factor in what's going on in China, whether it be uh, Zhongrong International failing to make payments, Evergrande's, uh, you know, bankruptcy reorganization, all these different factors hitting the Chinese economy. Yeah, we actually would be short China. China's not a name or an area that we like. Um, we think they're obviously entering, a, you know, at least an industrial recession. But no spillover into Latin do, America, India, and Japan. Yeah, we do like we, we like Japan. For example, Japan just had a six percent, you know, GDP, you know, increase. Uh, you know, and, and we see India having some forward momentum as well. And they're not fighting a federal, you know, a, a central bank that's raising rates. That's one of the big issues that we see. And there's some spots in Brazil as well that are going to have a couple good quarters in a row and not have the specter of of, of raising, you know, rates into their face, which. As you know, that's tough. It's tough for right. the U.S. economy at some point here to start continue to move higher when rates have been pushed so high. I mean, we saw 20-year highs uh, yesterday in the 30-year mortgage. Right. That's going to affect you know, the economy in the United States, and you're not having that problem in some of these other overseas markets. Michael, thanks. Have a great weekend. You too, Melissa. All right, final check uh, on the markets. I mean, for today. Hopefully it's not uh, final. Yeah, forever. It's, I know. It's, uh, it sounds so final. Um, we're down... 165 points now, but you never know. That's why you should value and treasure every day that you have. You know.